How's it going, Reg Day? Uh, here to talk about my experience over at the WrestleFest. It was at Newark Memorial High School in Newark, California. It's only about like 20 minutes away from where I live here in San Lorenzo. And Stevie Breach, he lives all the way up in Sacramento. He came all the way down here, and he lives that's like two hours away at least. So, dedicated fan over there. So, uh, let's get things started. I had the super ticket, so I got to meet everybody for uh, 125 bucks. So that was Ric Flair. Molly Holly, Chavo Guerrero, Godfather, Gangrel, and Scott Hall was supposed to be there, but he said he couldn't show up because of health issues, but there were some things that maybe, like, he, I don't think, not only, like, a relapse, but he kind of had, like, some setbacks about his recovery, so I don't know what really happened, but I don't, I think it'd be, I don't want Scott Hall to be there and he's wasted or he's shit crazy or whatever like that, but. Uh, Ezekiel Jackson was kind of like the replacement. He wasn't advertised for the spe the super ticket, but he was there. You know, took the autographs and some pictures, and there you go. So let's get things started. Talk about what I said or what I what I saw, stuff like that. So this is like the first ever convention I ever went to. So it was kind of cool. Just it was in a high school gym, and you walk in and there's all the way in the back, there's all these different booths and stuff where they're selling crap. They sell like DVDs, action figures, masks, t -sh bootleg T-shirts, and then like towards like uh, on the other on the like the left hand side, there are booths that wrestlers were at. Uh, Bad Influence was there, and Chris Masters was there. Papa Shango showed up later, and then there was an old school wrestling guy. I don't know what his name is, but I think if they told me, I would might have known him. Here's the advertisement. I don't think you, I don't know if you can see it, but I think it's what the hell is he? That guy right there. If you know who he is, tell me. I don't. Yeah, and uh, so things started at ten, and it wasn't like everybody. You met everybody at the same time. They kind of broke it up, which was kind of cool, because if you kind of have everybody there at the same time, you kind of got to rush it through, and everyone's go bang, 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 bang. So Molly, or who's first? Well, who was first? I don't even remember. But there was like three different sets. There was like the 11 to 1, and then the 1 to 3, and then the 3 to 5, which was Flair. And everybody was there to meet Flair. When I met Flair, I was number 30. There was 30. Josh and I were 37 and 38, my brother. And we left and we played like catch. And we came back. It was like a half hour, 45 minutes later. And there was still a long ass line from like almost to the back of the back of the gym because he started like in the gym right in the beginning so first there was these DVD sales going on so I got a Tyler Black and a CM Punk TV and this one I really wanted and then this one I probably shouldn't have got because both of them were 20 bucks it was 40 bucks all together and I probably should have not bought this one and talked to Bad Influence take a picture and uh, get their autograph because there was 10 bucks for for an autograph and 10 bucks for a pitcher. So, because this match, it's only about the Summer of Punks, there's not a lot of matches on there, but I really wanted it and I was kind of like an impulse buy. And then the Tyler Black, God's Last Gift, I just want to look pretty badass. There's like hella matches on here. There's uh, a bunch of Austin Aries matches, Daniel Bryan matches, uh, Nigel McGuinness, El Generico, David Richards, Jerry Lynn. So basically, I think I counted there was 19 matches on here, so for 20 bucks, 19 matches on here is a hell of a deal. Even though maybe I should have haggled a little bit, see if I can get them for cheaper than that, but 40 bucks, it is what it is. And Scott Hall wasn't there, but his kid was there, Cody Hall. So this is his autograph, his 8x10. Uh, you know, he was, he was might have been one of the coolest wrestlers that I met because he actually kind of stopped and talked and. He was cheap, but it was only 10 bucks. Usually it was 20 bucks if you wanted to get for both of them. And he kind of just talked about, he had like some shirt with like an elephant and a, and a panda or whatever on it. And he started talking to me about that. And then he, were, he, was, he asked me like if you were going to see the show, stay for the show. And I was like, yeah. And he asked, he asked me if I knew any of the matches because apparently he didn't know any of the matches. And I was like, no, uh, Bad Influence just tweeted out some of this. So I just know like they have a, a tag team match or something like that. And so, you know, he was cool. I threw up the click sign. And, yeah, so I'm going to make a flipogram a little later about, you know, put all the put together all the pictures that I made. I'll post that after I make this video. But if you want to see, like, a collage that I made, it's on my Instagram, cheese underscore 510. Follow me. And, uh, yeah.
So that was Cody Hall. And uh, I got, this was, I didn't need Molina, but there was like a stand and there was like all these different uh, autographs. It was only five bucks. There was a one with her in her bikini or there was this one, but I kind of like this one better because her, her boobies were squished together. So whatever. Back in the day, Molina, she was my uh, favorite wrestler and she still is. She's pretty damn hot. So five bucks for a Molina autograph. Can't beat that. And then, so, we got the Rock and Roll Express, Ricky and Robert. They were the only ones to personalize. They put to Brandon. They didn't, they didn't even ask me for it. The lady who was, like, the lady in front who, like, takes your crap and takes a photo. She was like, what's your name? And I was like, Brandon. And then, uh, I spell it B-R-A-N-D-O-N. So there's, like, all these different ways to spell it. So you can, like, B-E-N or B-A. So Ricky Morton asked me how to spell it. And, I guess I shot him this glare. Well, I didn't really think I did. Because he was like, oh, apparently you didn't like Because he was like, oh, it's, he was going to spell my name wrong on purpose. And apparently I shot him a glare. And I guess he didn't like that. But he was just joking around. And then, yeah, he take, I take the picture with him. And then Robert Gibson signs it. And then we were talking a little bit. And I guess he asked, he, he asked me how old I was. And kind of awkward. I'm not really good at hearing. So I thought he asked me how I was, and he asked me, I guess he asked me how old I was, like, three or four times, and I finally understood what he said, and I was like, oh, I'm 19. He was like, oh, my son's 19. And I was like, oh, well, I'm going to turn 20 in July, and he was like, oh, what, when? Oh, July 18th. Oh, his son's the 19th, so that was pretty cool. And then, uh, like, right next to where the DVD cells were at, there was all these magazines, so it was a dollar. So I got this one. It was the best of 2001, so it's kind of like a yearbook type thing, so I was like, oh. So the yearbook's probably going to be like a bunch of cool pictures on here. And I, I kind of lucked out. So, Stone Cold and Lita on the front. And then, ooh, Trish Stratus on the back right there for you. And then, get like a pull out of Lita. And then on the other side, there's... Can't really see it, but Stone Cold and... That's the other side, you can't really see the middle. Oh, there's the middle right there for you. So, uh, and then I was looking through it right before Molly Holly came out, and then I realized that all the demons are on here, so then I picked Molly, and then she signed that for me, and she was like, oh, that's old school. I was, I was like, oh, yeah, only a dollar, so she was surprised. I don't know if, I don't know if she took it like, oh, you only spent a dollar for me to get this signed, but whatever. And so, yeah, she signed it pretty big. My brother just, ha he didn't really have all that much different stuff to buy or f for to sign, so he just had the encyclopedia, so she signed it smaller, so, you know, a little smiley face right there. And it's kind of cool to look through all these old magazines, you see, like, old advertisements and stuff, which I really like to watch, because watch looking at, like, the ten or not Nintendo 64, but, like, like, the old PS2s and the Xbox commercials. And then we got another WWF magazine icon versus icon i didn't really know what to expect on this one but it's kind of it's of may in 2002 so I, I would assume this is after the match but i kind of flipped through it there's not really all that much to it i don't let's see i don't really know I, as soon as i bought them i opened them and looked at them there wasn't really anything special on this one i kind of just like the cover so maybe if, like one day i see rock or hogan getting assigned that I really don't really know what's on here. There's a more Lita. There's a like a Lita interview I think on here. One thing that I thought was cool is every time they put WWF, they put the little scratch logo on there. So like there'd be 50 of those logos on there. Whatever. And then here to the encyclopedia, which is mostly what I oh what I got everybody to sign. And so Chavo Guerrero in true wrestler fashion was a little late to the show because I guess he his flight got delayed. So we were, we were kind of like one of the first ones in our we we're kind of like in the middle, so we don't have to wait that long because everyone just kind of lined up. So there's there's Chavo's signature right there. Uh, talked to him, I was like, oh, I like the the podcast you did with Jericho, and he's like, oh yeah, man, thanks a lot. I'm gonna I guess he's gonna do a Roddy Piper interview soon, or he's already done one. And it's gonna release soon, and I haven't listened to the Roddy. I haven't listened to a Roddy Piper podcast yet, so I gotta check that one out. And let's see, huh? Back it up. Um here we go. 
And then we got Gangrel right here. Not much of a signature. It's just G with a couple of scribbles on it. He puts 13. Don't know why he puts 13 on there, but there you go. He's, when he takes the picture every single time, he the devil fingers and he sticks his tongue out. It's pretty creepy, but that's what his gimmick is. And then they didn't really talked. Oh, Godfather and Gangrel were the first two guys. Now I remember. And then you walk over to talk to the rock, to get signed by the Rock and Roll Express because it was like a main one. And then you walk across the gym, and then that's what the Rock and Roll Express was. So, Gangrel and Godfather, the first two guys. So, Godfather was the first person that I met, and then got him to sign the encyclopedia. Pretty good signature, it's pretty big. The one Josh got was a little smaller, but you know, it was what it was. Dude's hella tall. Um, what else do I Ezekiel. Okay. And then the second group was Molly Hall. Well, Chavo was supposed to be part of the first group, but he showed up a little late. And so he was kind of like the tail end of the first group. So Chavo was there, and then Molly Holly and Ezekiel Jackson came out at 1 o'clock. And then here's Big Zeke's signature. Big Zeke. He was wearing a. Uh, a tank top showing off the guns. The dude's, that dude's jacked. And then, once again, I'm awkward. And I'm not, I didn't. I like, I'm not the biggest Ezekiel Jackson fan, so I don't know what to say to him. And then he's like, "Oh man, don't be nervous." Like, I'm not nervous. I just don't know what the hell to talk to your ass. I'm like, oh, sorry you got released. Now you can get back on the steroids or whatever you do. So there you go. And then the main event, Ric Flair. A little late to the party, but uh, you got the the eight by ten there. A little. They had this one for sale, and then they had the like the classic, like the older or not the older, but the the younger Ric Flair where he has the belt. And there was so many people for Ric Flair, and I was thirty seven and thirty eight, as I already said. And I don't know by that time he was already done, but he wasn't even halfway there. And when I got there, I walked up kind of said hi and then I see because everybody else they're kind of cool you 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 carry your stuff and you give it to them but you have to Rick it's Rick Flair so you got to give them your stuff you know give it to the person the person gives it to him and so he just signs it and then we take the picture put up the four horsemen and then I just we take the picture and then he I take and it's like thanks and he just does just looks like the other way he doesn't even like look at me or anything like that and then Josh comes up, and then he he doesn't really talk to him either. He's like, I heard you on the Steve Austin podcast, and I guess he said, oh, I remember that. I was, all right, so they talked to, like, the wrestlers made more of an effort to talk to Josh than talk to me, because I'm the old loser, and Josh is the young pretty boy, I guess. Even though when we were in line to meet Ric Flair, one of the security guards thought that we were twins, even though we're five years older, and I'm dark and he's white, but whatever. So then after that, we left, went back to the, we came back to the high school, watched the show, and the show could have been a little better, but it was, it was fine. Ric Flair came out, cut a promo about, you know, Bay Area stuff, about the women, the 49ers, and there was a Raiders, Niners chant going back and forth, stuff like that. Molly Holly was a special referee in a women's match. It was actually, the women's match was probably either the second or third best match of the night. And then Chris Masters had a match. Cody Hall had a, Cody Hall had a match and he he was wrestling this like Italian dude and it was only like a couple minutes and he was like working over his arm and he does like this this move and then it kind of looked I don't know it looked like he might have got injured but the like the guy walked out and then he walked back and he told the referee something and then walked it back out again so he must have must have just walked out or something like that don't know Cody Hall ain't the most experienced technical wrestler in the world so got to hurt him and then. Godfather came out with the hose in a tag team match, and they won that. Chris Masters can't. Chris Masters won his match. Then Bad Influence against the two local guys was the main event, and Bad Influence cut a promo, and they were gonna cut the promo before the other dudes came out, but the the sound guy fucked up, so they were playing they were playing their music, the other guy's music, like while he was trying to talk, and Kazarian couldn't figure out how to turn on the mic or if the mic was on or whatever. And then he, they cut a promo how they're going to beat the piss out of... After they beat the piss out of the other tag team, they're going to beat the piss out of the sound guy. And then they ended up beating the piss out of the guys. They actually won. 
and they won, and they beat him down, and then Chris Masters uh, made a run-in, and everybody was training for Cody, and Cody was just in the... He was out there, because they still had, like, the... So they still had, like, signings and some booths open back uh, in the back. He was just standing there, and everyone was, like, looking at him. He was just like, I'm not doing anything. I'm just watching the show. And so, yeah, so... Oh, Gangrel came out, and... One of my friends, he was there, he was sitting in front row, and he was right in front of Gangrel, and he does the spitting of the blood thing, and I guess the blood go on him, and he said he was Kool-Aid, but I don't really, I don't think he knows what he is talking about. He didn't, I don't even think he knew who Gangrel was, he just said the guy. So, yeah. So, that's all the stuff I got. Got a, a lot of signatures. And so, now that I went to my first convention, can't wait for SummerSlam next, uh, in a couple months, and this time I'm going to probably buy a video camera so I can videotape what's going on because my phone I don't have that much life on it or I don't have that much storage on it because I've had it for a while so I have a lot of crap on it so by that so by that time I'll probably buy a camera and videotape it so do day in the life and more fancy stuff so thank you guys for watching and we'll see you guys later